guys, today we are going to work on a Copic marker piece in several steps and we're going to go over several uh, processes that you guys have requested and that I have covered in other videos, but I mean, we can always use a refresher. So one of the first things we're going to do is we're going to use some of this frisket film to mask our character, in this case, Kara from Seven Inch Kara. And I tend to hold on to scraps because you can always sort of make them work. So I'm gonna set my alcohol spritzers aside and you can find out how to make those in another video. And I'm going to use a little bit of washi tape to go ahead and tape my, this one might not actually work, the gold never really stuck, um, to go ahead and tape my image down to, I mean my frisket down to the paper so I can get a nice clean trace. And you don't actually need a lot of washi tape to do this, but you are going to need a fine point alcohol marker or some other type of marker that is alcohol solvent. And you want that because, oh, I actually need to move this over a little bit. And I need to go back in there with an eraser. You want something that's alcohol soluble because um, that way you can sort of wipe the paper down and the alcohol solvent ink will stay on the plastic until you use something a little more intense to remove it like rubbing alcohol. So I can't find my fine point Sharpie. Uh, fortunately, we don't necessarily need it. I'm just gonna use a regular big Sharpie to trace the outline of my character onto the masking frisket. All right, so we very quickly traced the character and you can either use scissors or a X-Acto blade to cut this out. I'm going to use scissors if I can find a pair. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out and I'll see you guys in a little bit. So our next step, anytime you're using an alcohol-based ink on something like Frisket, so a permanent ink, and you're going to use alcohol markers, you should wipe it down with rubbing alcohol. This is 99% isopropyl rubbing alcohol. I get it off of Amazon for a fairly good price. And you can check the links below if you're interested. And I just spray it on a paper towel and I go ahead and I wipe it off my masking frisket. And the reason I do that is when you're spraying alcohol inks, it can reactivate the alcohol uh, that was used as your solvent in Sharpies. And you can get a pretty gross sort of black smear that will get all over your image from that. So it's really just easier and cleaner. The end result is better, I think, if you just go ahead and wipe it down. Now you could use a Copic or other alcohol-based marker to trace your image and use the same colors you plan on spraying if you just really don't wanna go through this step. But it's such a minimal step that I really don't mind. It doesn't have to be 100% perfectly clean does need to be somewhat clean though. Okay, so next we're going to go ahead and we're gonna remove the masking, the paper from the masking frisket and apply our mask. And I like to apply it in stages. I just find I get a cleaner application that way. And a dear friend of mine, Candace Ellis, has actually recommended using um, dot toner or any, not dot toner, uh, tone, sort of like uh, mangaka tone. If you can't see where you're applying your frisket, which is something I have complained about several times on this channel. And I haven't tried that myself, but it does seem like if you have some tone laying about, that would be a good way to do it. So on this image, I um, didn't trace as closely as I could have, and I should have. You wanna burnish out 
any sort of buckled areas because those are going to be areas where your ink's going to seep through. And you can just use your finger to burnish. And you basically just want a good seal between your frisket. So if you get any really bubbled up areas, you just use like your fingernail to push that all the way down. Then we're gonna go and use our alcohol ink misters. And these are misters that I made myself and I have a tutorial here on the channel. They will evaporate over time, so these may not work as well as they once did. Variety of droplets. And if you make a mess, another great thing about alcohol inks is you can use that same rubbing alcohol to clean them up. So here is another. This is cranberry. It's one of the ranger colors. And those are pretty much only available. Find you have applied too heavy a color or too dark a color. You can use your rubbing alcohol to spray on top of it and it'll push some of that color out. Or you can spray on top with a lighter color. And this is watermelon, also a ranger ink. to do a little spurt of this color here, pool, because I wanted to work in contrasting colors today. So I'm just gonna, hopefully I can get this to work. Mm. Wants to do a very fine mist. All right, so I'm going to let that dry and then remove the frisket immediately. So while I was putting away my inks, I found the all ink in white, and we're gonna try just adding a little visual interest by shaking it on top of the mask. And since it's an alcohol ink, it's a little different than if you were flicking, um, if you were flicking like Copic Opaque White or White Gouache because it will interact with the paint or the ink that you previously applied. And it's also going to be a little thicker and more opaque. And if you are an artist who is completely unfamiliar with these inks, um, these are basically alcohol inks, the Adirondack inks or the Pinata inks are alcohol-based inks that you can get at your local uh, Michaels, your Joann's, pretty much any craft store. And they make a wonderful addition to your alcohol marker, your Cop Copic marker collection. And they do tend to be a little bit more affordable and are often available in colors that you couldn't get in Copic. So I'm just going to go ahead and allow that to dry as well. So as a little intermission while I wait for my ink to dry, I wanna show you guys a really cool trick that I like to do to sort of take, it, take advantage of everything I can. So using inexpensive watercolor paper, I'm going to rip out a sheet in advance. And you guys will see why I'm not using my surface and tabletop in a moment. And this is a Ranger Ink Essentials craft mat. And I've had this thing for a couple years and this thing is great because it doesn't absorb anything or it absorbs very little. So I'm going to use that rubbing alcohol that's 99% isopropyl rubbing alcohol that I was telling you guys about. And just like if I were gonna clean this down, I'm gonna go ahead and spray this. This activates those inks again. And then I'm gonna take my watercolor paper and I'm gonna put it on top of my alcohol inks and I'm gonna spread it down like this. And you see, I have a neat little frame and there's still some on the tabletop. So I can do that again and I can do that until it's clean. And if I want to, I can watercolor on top of that because the watercolor isn't going to um, 
activate the alcohol inks that I use. So those colors will stay fairly bright, vibrant. I'm actually running a little low on isopropyl alcohol. So it is time to restock. I think this table has one more mono print in it. Lay that down, rub that in. And we have a different frame there. So these are assets that I will scan and use in my digital illustrations to help make them look a little bit more like traditional media. And I like them so much that I offer them in my gum road and my backers actually get access to them for free. And I have to open that bottle. But you can just clean your tabletop if you're using a glass surface or if you're using a non-porous surface or a non-staining surface, you can just go ahead and wipe it down with some wet, like alcohol-based wipes. Some people like to use hand sanitizer. I just hate hand sanitizer. Um, so I just use plain old rubbing alcohol. And you wanna clean it because whatever you don't clean even though it is alcohol based and it's not likely to transfer, it can stain, it can smear. It's just really better if you practice clean studio practices and clean up your mess afterwards. And you can use rubbing alcohol to get the ink off your hands. I care about that because I'm gonna be using alcohol markers for the rest of this piece and I don't wanna run the chance of staining things with dirty fingers. Just clean and wipe down that work surface. And since it's rubbing alcohol, it really takes very little time. And then we're gonna peel this off. And I don't wanna to use too much of my fingers to do it. So I'm looking for one of the many X-Acto blades I keep on my tabletop. And I'm not seeing it because it's that kind of night tonight. Ah, there it is. And I'm sure some of you who are parents know better than to leave blades out. Most of you who are parents know better than to leave blades out. So you might be watching with some envy that I can be cavalier about my supplies. Anyway, I'm trying to get underneath the frisket. The longer you leave the frisket on, the more likely the adhesive is gonna melt from the rubbing alcohol and the more likely it is to leave a gross sticky residue that is actually very hard to fix and very hard to work around. So trying not to stick my hand in, there we go, a puddle that may have taken longer to dry. And you see I had some masking issues is not a perfect mask. There are a couple of things we can do to kind of fudge, and I'll show you those right now. See, I did end up picking up some of that. So I'm gonna wanna clean that up as soon as possible. But we're gonna wanna grab a colorless blender, hopefully one that is fairly juicy, and we're going to use the colorless blender to just sort of mask where we didn't do a good job with masking. So push a little bit of color into the area. Soften the transition between what was masked and what wasn't masked. We're also going to use it to clean up a little bit. You can only do so much, but to clean up a little bit some of those areas where um, the mask maybe wasn't as secure as it should have been. And it's mostly just a concern on skin she has darker hair, so I'm not really. All 
All right, so this is where we are right now. If you wanted to do sort of a cheap galaxy background, that would be a really easy way to do that. It doesn't really require a whole lot of ability, just a little bit of discernment. So we're gonna grab a whole handful of Copic markers that are going to need to be swatched. I selected ahead of time the sort of color palette I wanted to roll with for this, and I wanted to do pinks and aquas. So I'm going to need to swatch these so I can determine what colors I actually want to use. But I'm going to go ahead and grab my most commonly used skin tones for her. And I color cute little Kara often enough that I know them almost by heart. We want to grab a very, very light blue and just go ahead and add some shading to her eyes. We really want a blue green if we can get a hold of one light enough. So that'll be in keeping with the background. This will work. So I'm using BG000. And I'm just coloring the whole top half of her eyes. And I know that's a little difficult for you guys to currently see. I will change the camera in a couple of minutes. So next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and swatch my markers, make sure I am familiar with everything that I'm working with and that every color looks like I think it should look. And I'm going to eliminate the colors I don't need. So I'm gonna do that and then I'll check in with you guys. All right guys, so I went ahead and I swatched everything and I found what I think are gonna be some really promising blends. So if you are blending along at home, might I recommend BG11, BG15, a self-filled Copic marker filled with Ranger Mermaid, and Blix 017, which is teal green, I think is gonna make for a really nice uh, blue-green sort of blend. Also, in the Peaches and Roses, I think R30, R32, and then Blix 011 Coral Pink will also be quite nice. And I may pull from my B team of Marvy La Plume super duper fine in case I decide I want to add some cute surface details. So that's what those look like. Anyway, I usually start with the skin and with lighter skin tones, I tend to start with a base color. And this was previously inked, and I'm by previously, I really mean a long time ago, with a Sailor Mitsuo Ida brush pen. Unfortunately, there's only one place you can get it, and that place is not a friend of mine, but you can get them from jetpins.com. Um, if they were sold anywhere else, I would be happy to plug that someplace else, but I am not going to show for jetpins. You can also use a Sakura Micron. Those are Copic and waterproof. You can use a Copic Multiliner, again, Copic and waterproof. Or you can use Kaime Soul K, which is only Copic proof and will run with water. So for my first pass, I'm just going to do some all over color, or at least all over everywhere their skin. And this is just sort of my base coat. So I'm not really worried about streaking because I'm gonna color over it. Then I give it a second pass with the same color. And since some of you following along at home have expressed an inability to see what I am doing, let's fiddle with the camera until we get something that works for everybody. 
when I mess with alcohol-based markers, I like to work on thicker paper, so I am using Strathmore Smooth Bristol. And this holds on to the alcohol, the blending solution used in the markers for a little bit longer. It doesn't evaporate quite as quickly because we are dealing with a thicker uncoated paper. That means I can do more layers and I can get a softer, more like watercolor effect. Very gentle blends. I found that with most Copics, you can get about three layers of shading if you're strategic per marker. And some of my favorite colors for pale Caucasian skin tones are E000 Pale Fruit Pink, next E00, then E51, E34, and then for blush, I like 094 in Blick, which is Shell, E93 in Copic, and RO2. So we're going to move on to E00. And I'm going to dual wield. I'm going to pull out Shell. And I'm going to start adding in areas of blush while this layer is still wet so they dissolve a little bit more. You can always use the color you were previously using to lay down color to help blend it out if it's a little too stark of a contrast. But I find that Blix Shell is a great sort of intermediate skin tone color that's useful in instances like this. It is a very, very fair, very light, rather, uh, sort of a blush tone. Then while that's still wet, I'm going to grab E93, which is a Copic color. And if you find that your E93 is going down too dark, you can blend it out a little bit with Shell. And I am adding pink to her knuckles, to her elbows, underneath where her head meets her neck, to the palms of her hands, and of course to her lips. And finally, I'm going to do just a little bit of RO2, which is flesh. It can be a bit of an intense color. So I want to use it kind of sparingly. And then I'm going to go back with E00 and blend some of that out. You can always add more but it can sometimes be hard to take away. All right, we're going to move up a notch to E51, Milky White. And while that's wet, I'm gonna add in a little bit of my darkest skin tone color for this. And I'll read you guys the color name in a second, but I'm going to be blending that out. So that's why I want to go ahead and get in there. And that's E34. So we'll go back to E51 blend some of these colors out a little bit. And grab T-Rose as well. Add some pink back in. So 
especially to the lips and the underside of the nose. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab a blue violet. And I like to swatch these as well before I commit. So I think I'm going to use BV31 and that's just gonna knock the intensity down a little bit and make it look more like it's in shadow. And then when it ceases, when it ceases to be cold to the touch, that's when the alco alcohol has evaporated out. Go ahead and add some of that shadow back in. Not too, too much. And I wanna give that a chance to dry. So while I'm letting that dry, I'm just gonna go ahead and do one layer of E97 to her eyes. And the same to her hair, because Kara's hair and eye color are the same. And with Copics, I really like to let my brush do the work. Cut a lot of flack recently, because uh, in a really old review, uh, I stupidly said that most artists prefer the brush end on their markers. I do still definitely prefer that, but a lot of other artists spoke up and said that they did not feel the same way. But for me, I find it easiest if I can let the brush do the walking. I also personally happen to prefer a watercolor-esque aesthetic and utilizing the brush end of your alcohol markers is a great way to get that effect. So whenever people ask me for alcohol marker recommendations, I do usually recommend something that has a brush tip. So as you can see, we let the brush do most of the work and we left some significant areas of white. I'm gonna go back into her skin now that it's had a chance to dry and with a very light hand, dab in her freckles. And sometimes I like to use a couple of colors for her freckles just because that is more realistic. And when applying freckles, I try to apply it to the tops of the forearm, the sides of the neck, anything that would get sun kissed. We are next going to do another layer of deep orange, leaving the bottoms of the eye unfilled in. I find that thinking about marker the same way I think about watercolor, where I am progressively trying to build up contrast, build up different shades, build up different tones, has really helped me progress and also helps prevent a piece from getting too muddy. So one of my tricks for that is for every layer, I need to co cover or color less than the layer before. And even if the difference isn't too significant, I think it does make a difference. So going with that, I'm starting in with E08 Brown. And you'll notice that when it comes to hair, I don't really do a lot of blending back and forth between colors. I find that that tends to make my colors look a bit much. And now I 
I'm using E47 for what might be the final layer of hair color in this piece. And sometimes if I'm not entirely satisfied, I will go back one or even two layers, try to get the colors that I want. So don't feel bad if it takes you a little extra back and forth, figuring things out, you'll get there. Alright, so next I need to start on the dress and I want the main body of her dress to be, I always say this and it never ends up this way, but I think a light aqua, always end up darker than I intended. I like to select my palette ahead of time, try and keep it somewhat limited, try to keep me somewhat honest. Because I feel like if I have all of my colors, all of my markers at my disposal, I will go overboard and ruin things. So we're going to try and get three layers of tone out of Moon White. This is one, this is layer two. Remember we're covering less in each subsequent layer. We want to build up contrast. All right, I need to give that a chance to dry a little bit. That way we can get that contrast we're after. So I'm gonna go back to nitpicking in her hair. Wow, that would be the literal definition of that, wouldn't it? Go back to noodling around, I should say. Just trying to build up that contrast. It gives this bit of a chance to dry. And I think we can indeed get three layers of tone. And really what this buildup is, is saturating the paper. So you get three layers of the same color before the paper is saturated with that color. And subsequent colors, you're probably not going to be able to get as much out of them. it and do the same for her skirt but we're actually going to end up with a darker color I think for her skirt so with darker colors I like to build up to that color and that way it feels a little more rich a little more saturated so I'm just doing sort of an all-over color right now I don't mind if it looks patchy and scratchy because it's gonna get covered up I, you want to start with a lighter color so that you can leave highlights because it's easier to build up to something than it is to work reductively with what with I'm gonna say with watercolor but it's true for both alcohol markers and watercolor because these are thin layers of transparent color it just doesn't look the same if you were to put a heavy opaque color on top of these. You can use that for like certain accents, maybe for corrections, but if we just want to add a simple highlight, it's really just best if we build up to that highlight. And it's probably about time for me to refill Moon White. It's starting to get much patchier. And 
front, okay? That's something that can be done completely off camera. You guys don't need to see that. And that third layer we talked about. I'm not actually that concerned with that. So I'm going to move over now to BG15 Aqua. I'm going to use Aqua here just to add some shadows and I'm going to blend those shadows out. Using Moon White. And I think for blending, thicker papers are really where it's at for alcohol markers. You can do a lot more blending. All right, now to cover some real ground. And I'll still be blending back and forth between aqua and moon white. But this is closer to the color I have in mind for the skirt. things easier on me. It's easier to blend while they're wet. I'm just going to start working it out. So once your marker is no longer really putting down a darker version of the color for each subsequent layer, that's when it's time to go ahead and move on to the next color, at least on heavier papers like this Bristol here. We're just about at that point. Like I said though, you're not going to get a significant buildup of color if unless you, well you're going to get a smoother blend that's going to be less noticeable. So you might want that or you might want a more sharp change in color, in which case you should let it dry before you apply the next layer. And so I've switched over to pool and I'm sort of working back and forth now between pool and aqua, blending those colors out. You can see why I said it's better to start light. I tend to work and get pretty dark. All right. So I'm going to go back now to Moon White and I'm going to fill in all of those two buttons and I'm going to let that dry. So next I need to start working with pink. So I'm going to grab R30. I'm just going to go ahead and fill in the bodice and move on up to R32 and we'll start on the 
part further away from the light source. And then go back to R30 and blend that out a little bit. And then do another layer of R32. And let that dry. So, I'm going back to those buttons, going to do two little circles, which will be the highlight, and then we're going to fill the rest in. A little shadow with 011 coral pink. Now I need to find a blue violet that will stand up a bit to that pink and sea green. So something perhaps a little more saturated than what we use on the skin. Hmm. I'm having trouble finding something in my stash. So I don't know if you can hear, but I am actually swatching several markers. I guess that'll work. I'm not excited about it. And I ended up with 045 in Blick Studio marker. I'm just adding a little bit of shadow. You don't want to do too much. That used to be a big problem of mine, as I would try to go realistic. My style is clearly not a realistic art style. Um, but I would try to do like realistic amounts of shading, and it would just look muddy. And then I wouldn't understand why. I'm actually cheating, and well, not cheating, there is no cheating, but I'm going, went back in to her skin and added a little bit as well, just to sort of marry all of it together, make it look like it belongs. And a little on the bodice. really don't want too much because it will make your work look muddy. We might have to go a little darker on this skirt. We'll see. Find out in a minute. Take the plunge and then live to regret it. But I think it works okay. Especially because I do plan on doing another layer of shadow on there. Alright. And then little bit coming up from the skirt. A little bit on these and definitely on that. All right. Oh. So little bit of pink back in that bodice. Use 017 teal green. You guys can see that I really use quite a few Blick Studio brush markers in my regular rotation. That's why I think it's so cute that some of the popular YouTubers have finally discovered that these markers are pretty good. I've been trying to get you guys to buy these markers for years. But that's great for Dick Blick because they are making a pretty great product. So I really hope that gets them increased sales. Just wish people had listened a little sooner. And 
dot and a dot. I want a little bit darker of a pink. Mm, it's not exactly what I wanted. Not that you guys can see. I like how I do a lot of that talking off camera. Mm, it's too red. So with the Blick Studio brush markers, I love them. My only complaint is that the caps are sometimes not truly indicative of the color. So, you know, you just gotta swatch it. All right, so far, really, really cute. So here's how this is gonna go down. I do wanna do the alcohol markers. I think I wanna do like, little roses on her skirt, like those little sweetheart roses. Mm, this pink might not be enough. Might need to grab a red as well. And I'm just going to freehand them in. And the way alcohol markers work is they displace the color below them. So as you can see, there's a fair amount of displacement on the other side. So this pink will still show up, but it won't be like as though I had drawn this on with uh, color pencils or with gouache. I think it, I think using uh, alcohol markers for surface design kind of leads to a stronger in product for this sort of application. In the past, I would have used um, and I still would use, depending on what kind of a design. Like I, I did a tutorial where I'm playing with the Spectrum Noir um, color pencils, the floral set, with my alcohol markers. And I use them to do Russian or maybe it was Danish brocade. And it worked out really, really well because the colors popped off quite nicely. But for this, I don't actually want this surface pattern to be the focus of the piece. I just want it to sort of add a finishing touch because her dress is looking a little underwhelming. Which is fine. I, for seven inch Kara stuff, I really enjoy not only dressing Kara in elaborate outfits for sort of this bonus material, but I also enjoy dressing her in stuff that's incredibly wearable that people would actually wear. This is based off of a 50s little girl dress, a dress for a 10 year old child, which is what Kara is. Actually, she's 11. Close enough. And I also thought it had kind of a fairy tale vibe to it. So I'm just adding a little red here and there and then blending it out with the pink. And I'm not the biggest fan of the Marvie LaPlume fine brushes, but they are the smallest alcohol marker tips I have found. Um, they are a fiber based tip, so that can be, they fray and that can be really frustrating. But, um, they are great for this sort of application and they're good if you can use a lighter hand. They're never gonna have the sort of flex and forgive that Copic markers have, that Prismacolors have, that Blick Studio brush markers have. So you can't quite push them to the same extent. And I got a set of 36 really cheap off of the Jerry's website. So I, if you guys are not Jerry's customers, I really recommend you check them out. And the Blick Studio brush markers come from Dick Blick and were purchased out of my own pocket because I bought them to review them and I really like them and they're very affordable and they're very accessible and I really, you know, when you guys are like, which AliExpress marker should I get? It's really, you should get the Blick Studio brush markers. You're going to be so much happier with those. They perform almost like Copics and while they're not intended to be refillable, a couple of my intrepid commenters say they have refilled theirs, although I am not sure what they're refilling them with. I mean, you could use the various inks, but maybe they're using the Ranger inks. I don't know. Um, and no one has yet shared with me a color matching chart, but I would love that because 
while I could get started on making one, it would cost me several hundred dollars to finish making one. Sounds like a backer goal, doesn't it? Nice Patreon reward. All right, so that's the start of our roses. Next, I'm going to do little blue rose buds. Wanted a pattern that is also sort of indicative of the 1950s. Not that seven inch care takes place at that time period, but you know, just wanted to stay in keeping with the clothes I designed. And grab a slightly darker blue. What I wish Marvy would release is a fine point with this color family. So instead of the brush, you get an alcohol-based fine part they point. They have a black fine point that I have and I would really like it if I could do some of these effects because um, you want sometimes you want that alcohol marker sort of alcohol solvency it just um, has certain effects that you're not going to get with like a water-based fine liner or a pigment-based fine liner and I'm sorry if I was off camera and nattering and I'm just drawing cute little green leaves Sometimes when I start doing surface design, because it's so much like doodling, I have a hard time stopping doing surface design. But I'm going to stop once I'm done with the leaves. I think it looks very cute though. I'm going with this little bit of dark green. And you see how that white um, ranger, like snow cap, mixative, whatever, that's designed to be mixed in with other colors to make them a little bit opaque and to make them pastel. And I've never used it for that. I should give it a shot, but I've never used it for that because um, pigment stuff sometimes has clogging properties. Blend that out a little bit. but I like how it sort of activated the ink from behind it. It's a little less noticeable on camera than it is in person, but it has a softer effect than if I had flung, flung Copic Opaque White or some other sort of white paint, like a white acrylic. It's just a different effect. So it's fun to be able to play around with a variety of media. I have a variety of media at my disposal. And um, while this isn't like watercolor, I don't need to let it dry overnight. I'm going to step away from the evening and resume this tomorrow. All right, guys, so it's a brand new day. I've got my Copic Opaque White. And one of the first things I want to do is I want to activate it. I added some water earlier since it does tend to get dry. And the nice thing about Copic Opaque White is you can just add some water and let it sit and it'll start to reactivate again. So even if you think your bottle is completely ruined and dried out, you can usually reconstitute it. So we're actually going to solidify and make it look intentional. This sort of white halo we're getting where I kind of improperly masked. And I'm just gonna do that with a delicate application of the Copic Opaque White. We're gonna do it on the underside here as well. With art, if you can make your mistakes, art and illustration, if you can make your mistakes look intentional, you will often get a better looking piece than what would have happened if there had been no mistakes at all. Especially with traditional art, since no one really expects it to be perfect. I 
Then we're going to go in and we're going to add a few highlights. And some of you guys might use a gel pen for this, like a Signo. And I'll grab that in a few minutes. But I do want to just go ahead and utilize All right, so I'm gonna let that dry and go grab my Signo gel pen. For the final installment of this piece, we're gonna go ahead and use a Signo white gel pen. These happen to be my favorite white gel pens. I find that they perform well and consistently. And I'm just going to draw on some lace, just little scallops. And lace is really easy because you can start with simple shapes and then add more complex shapes just by drawing on top of it. And let that dry. And I'm actually going to grab so I picked up a couple of these Recollections opaque markers. I've used them off and on over the past two years. I find they perform fairly well for what we're looking for. I'll go ahead and demonstrate for you. So it's a bit like a paint marker, except you don't have to pump it and you don't have to prime it. You can build up the color and these are water-based. So if you're Excuse me, if you're using water-based markers over, I mean, water-based markers and alcohol markers together, I recommend you start with the alcohol markers and you finish with the water-based markers. And we're just going to add an opaque dot pattern to the front of her little vest or bodice. And these little pins are fairly inexpensive and they're pretty handy. They don't come in a wide range of colors though. I've really only seen them in white, this teal color, and a pink. All right. And then we're going to use the pink we, I mean the ink. We originally inked with the pink we inked. And we're just going to add a slight outline to the lace just to make it look like it belongs on the image and I'll actually zoom in so you guys can see what I'm doing and do it over here as well And definitely down here, we also want to reestablish that ink line. It got messed up a little bit. And doing that just gives the finished piece a cleaner look. And if you guys enjoy my art, you should definitely check out my webcomic, 7 Inch Kara. You can read it at 7inchkara.com or you can add it to your Tumblr dash at 7inchkara.tumblr.com and it, it follows the adventures of this super cute little girl here. Her name is Kara. She's a Lilliputian meeting humans for the first time. And it is entirely in watercolor, so if you like my traditional art, that is definitely something you should check out. You should also check out my alcohol markers playlist. I have loads of tutorials that'll demonstrate all sorts of techniques, including how to make the alcohol misters I showed you guys at the beginning of this video. So if you enjoy my alcohol marker art, I highly recommend that playlist. And if you like what you see, please consider subscribing. I update twice a week with art education content. I've been doing a lot of comic based content lately. So if you're interested in making your own comics, or if you're just curious about how comics are made, I highly recommend you check out my Intro to Comic Craft playlist as well. 
If you're interested in alcohol marker reviews, you should head on over to my blog at natasoup.blogspot.com. I have dozens of alcohol marker reviews over there, as well as tutorials, gift guides, and recommendations. Lastly, if you enjoy content like this and you'd like to see it continue, please do consider joining my art nerds on Patreon at patreon.com slash natosoup. Art nerds get early access videos, they get backer exclusive content, and their financial contributions go towards helping me keep my art education free to the public. So you can find out more information at patreon.com slash natosoup. All right, I think this piece is just about done. It turned out absolutely adorable. I wanna thank you guys for hanging out with me today and markering with me. I hope you learned something new. If you found this video helpful, useful, informative, or inspiring, don't forget to leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. If you have any questions, leave a comment as well. And make sure you hit like, and that lets YouTube know that they, you wanna see more content like this. I highly recommend that if you enjoy content like this, that you do subscribe to my channel for even more adorable marker tutorials. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys have a great day and I hope to see you again really soon. Bye.